Bella, thank you so much for talking to us today. That's it's lovely cool. to see you. Um, what are you most looking forward to at the awards tonight? Really excited to host. It's my debut hosting the events tonight. And it's the first time we're here at the Emirates Old Trafford as well. Such an amazing venue. And just to be among my peers and so much talent, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you a cricket fan yourself? Massive cricket fan. What an honor. I've never actually been to this ground. So nice absolutely loving that. Just got to remember that I'm actually at work and I can't <laughs> just walk around the ground all day. So the British Asian Media Awards tonight are a celebrate celebration of diversity, inclusion and multiculturalism. So why do you think these awards are so important? Oh, hugely important. Shining a light on an area which is perhaps not as many stories going the mainstream um, and just so much talent in these diverse communities. And if COVID-19 has shown us anything, it's the ethnic minority communities were disproportionately affected by the pandemic. And so the media organisations that will be here tonight have been educating, informing, entertaining, you know, throughout this period. And I just think it's so important that we recognise that talent. So your career progression has been quite interesting. Uh, but yeah. I hope we got the research <laughs> correct. You were a media lawyer for ITV at first, correct. is that correct? That is and then correct. went into journalism yes. and then presenting. So can you just tell us a bit more about that progression and how you yeah. found each step? I always wanted to be a presenter, but I didn't think it was doable. I thought it was very competitive, which it is. I thought you'd probably have to know somebody in the industry. I didn't really think it was a viable career path. I thought, well, oh, it's like one in millions would get to do it. You know, why would I get to do it? So I was actually very interested in law when I was younger. I was obsessed with legal TV dramas and films and things like that. So, um, and my mum said I was very argumentative as well. So always helps. Always helps. Um, well. <laughs> I don't know. About that. Um, so, so yeah. So I decided to do law as my undergraduate degree, and I actually loved it. Really enjoyed it. And then I did a post grad as uh, to, to train to become a lawyer. So the LPC, which is like the solicitors side of it. And um, it was tricky to get a training contract, so I started working in house, and I worked worked at a few different in house companies, um, in house depart legal departments in media companies, Discovery Channel, and um, some various law firms, and then I ended up at ITV, and in ITV Sport as well. So that was ideal because it was media and it was sport, and I loved law and it was still being in the legal department there. I managed to do my training contract through ITV, so that was great. Um, but it did then give me that insight into the other side of broadcasting and I got to see the talent working firsthand, what it's like, and I thought, maybe I can do it, you know, maybe I should give it a try. My mum and dad were basically like, look, you've qualified as a lawyer now, you can always go back to that, why don't you just give it a try and see how you find it. If you don't enjoy it or it doesn't work out, you just go back to being a lawyer. So I quit my job and I um, went and did a broadcast journalism postgrad diploma at the London College of Communication. So it was it was nine months. So like this, the, not the masters, like the full masters. But I just needed enough to get me sort of to hit the ground running because obviously I was a mature student, immature student. Um, <laughs> and so I did that, and that taught me the basics. You know, writing the cue, editing audio, everything that you guys have been learning. Um, just what makes a good top line, you know, who makes a good guest, what questions to ask, that type of thing. You're doing great, by the way. Um, Too kind. <laughs> so that was great. And whilst I was there, I was just hammering editors for work mm. experience and mostly radio. I knew that I wanted to do TV, but I thought radio is a good place to learn everything because you're kind of a one-stop shop, aren't you? You're like reading, editing, writing, everything. So, um, yeah, I managed to get some really good work experience placements and through that I got offered some freelance shifts and it wasn't easy. I've given you a whistle-stop tour, but there was a lot of working for free, shadowing, um, a lot of no's, you know, um, a lot of emails that you don't get replied to, things like that. But eventually, you know, take the ones that you can get and I just made the most of all of those experiences. Um, and eventually, I was at um, Sunrise Radio, which also had a TV side. And the girl who used to do the TV bulletins was on holiday for three weeks. So this was like my time to shine. So they said I could fill in for those three weeks to do the TV bulletin. So I did. And then I was like, right, well, it's definitely for me. I definitely want to do TV. So that was my first little in. And then after that, when I was working at the BBC, I would sometimes try and adapt my radio packages and make them suitable for TV and ask them, do you want to take this package so I could get a bit more experience? But that wasn't live, that was all like pre-recorded packages. Um, but I kept going with it, kept going with it, and eventually I got screen test at Channel 5. And I always say like that was, for me, that was like my big break because um, 
it was my first live bulletins on TV, mainstream channel as well. And um, how did that feel? Yeah, it was unbelievable. I when I went for the screen test, the cameraman, you know, they they're fitting you in between shows, these screen tests, so you've not got much time. And the cameraman said to me, um, oh, do, do you have your own earpiece? Like, you know, they're trying to hurry up. And I was like, oh, oh no, I don't have it with me. Didn't have one. Um, <laughs> oh, right. Like, well, you know, well, you can, we've got a spare one. You can use that sign. So he gave it to me. I didn't even know how to put it in. Like, it, I was just like, um, so do you want me to put the earpiece in for you? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I just think I could see the looks on all of their faces. Like, who is this person that's come for a screen test? She doesn't know what she's doing. So he helped me with the earpiece. Counted down. I was a bit nervous. It was a screen test. So it was fine. Just reading a bulletin. You know, I knew I could do it. Read the bulletin, and then after they even said to me, they said, oh, we were a bit worried about, <laughs> about you uh, when you first came in, but you know, you did really well with the bulletin and good luck, and um, the channel really liked it. So they, they said to me, um, come and do some freelance shifts here. And that was amazing. That felt like my, like I said, my first break, because, you know, and like you were asking me, how did it feel? When you're in the studio, you're on your own, because the camera's being operated like remotely from a gallery. But when that clock starts ticking down and they're, they're counting down the numbers in your ear, like I could oh, I felt like see my heart coming out. It was beating that fast. But when I got through the first story, I, it was fine. And you know, I loved it. And um, yeah, and so from that, I um, approached Sky Sports. Um, Sky Sports News has always been like my dream place to work. I've watched it since I was young. Um, again, never really thought it would be possible for me to work there. It's like my pinnacle. And um, yeah, managed to get in. So shadowing. Mm -hmm. Shadow bulletins, freelance, and then now I'm there now, yeah, permanently. So, so from that journey, what do you think your kind of highlight of your career so far has been? Uh, one of the highlights that always stands out to me is Deadline Day at Sky Sports News because I like used to watch it religiously. Me and my dad watch it together, like you know, twice a year, and it was just the best day. It looked so much fun, and you know, I just want to know everything. Like, I live and breathe it like, on that day, and to be a part of it and work it. The first one was incredible because I've done four now um, and the first one I just couldn't even like believe I was there it was, it was just amazing it was just it is exactly how what you see on TV you know like the chaos yeah. and the fun and you've got like all the guests like revolving door of like pundits and commentators and everyone's enjoying themselves and it's it's just such a buzz. How else have you enjoyed working in sport? Like, what kind of aspects particularly attracted you to that field? Um, well, I love football and cricket. Like, those are my main two sports. I've always like loved watching them anyway, whether I'm at work or not. So it makes it like it's not really work because you're watching it anyway. Even if I wasn't working at Sky News, I'd be watching the game. I'd be watching the cricket. I'd be watching, you know, um, the hundred things like that. What did you guys think of the hundred? Did you oh, like fantastic. it? Fantastic. Okay, good. You watched too much of it in our house. It was, kind of always <laughs> it was on pretty work. good, wasn't it? Should be doing work. Um, but yeah. It's so it's. It doesn't feel like work, um, so I just think it's a it, it's a dream being able to do something that doesn't feel like work. I look forward to going to work. You know, I miss it if I'm off for a little while. If I go on holiday, I do look forward to coming back home, and going back to work, which I know is really strange, but it's, it's a nice thing. Though. Yeah, a really a nice thing. A really nice thing. I feel so lucky to be there, and like the, the people that we work with, the teams that we work with, in, t in not just in front of the camera, but production, the directors, the producers, they all work so, so hard. And even like Deadline Day, it's such a big production. And it's all testament to this hard work that gets put in like months and months in advance, the planning. And I just feel really like lucky to be a part of it all, really. Particularly being a woman in sport yeah. and in journalism, like, have you faced any struggles with that? Yeah. I think in sport in particular, obviously, like women are still a minority, but that is changing and it's changing quite rapidly as well, which I think I've noticed that more since I've come in. I haven't been in sports journalism that long, really, when you think about it. But when I speak to my colleagues who maybe have been female colleagues who've been in the industry for maybe like 10, 20 years, it's a stark difference to where it is now and where it was. But also, like I say, the rate that it's changing. There are days when I will have an all-female team. I'll have a female co-presenter, a female producer, a female director, female director's assistant. And I think that's amazing in sport. And so I think 10 years ago, I don't think that would have been the case. You know, we've got so many females working at Sky, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. So in terms of reporters, pundits, commentators, presenters, but then also like producers, directors, camera operators, uh, graphics designers, you know, things like that. So it's really encouraging how it's changing. It always needs to be better. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, we can all, we, we're always gonna want more, and rightly so, but I think, the more it changes, the more it just becomes the norm. Fantastic to hear you speaking so positively as well. Yeah. It's great to hear. Yeah. Um, 
What advice would you kind of give to some young journalists like, like us to be there, um, facing kind of the challenges you might have faced throughout your career? You told us amazingly about how you kind of progressed through step. Yeah. But were there any moments where you thought, this, this is something I wish I could have told myself? Be authentic. Don't try and be someone else because it is, it's good in this industry, I think, to look at other presenters. Like if you want to be a presenter, if you want to be a reporter, like look at other presenters and reporters whose work you like and whose style you like. And it's, I think that's good. Learn from good habits and bad habits. And also look at the ones you don't like. Think, mm, I'm not, I don't really like how they do this or how they do that. Like Pick the best bits, but, but ultimately be yourself. Put your own spin on it. That's always the best feedback I've got is when I've done shows, when I've been myself and I've had my own personality come through and it makes you you. Otherwise you are just, you know, there reading an auto cue. So just try and like put your spin on things. Don't be afraid to be yourself is what I would say. I think it's really important like to do that. And I do it now, but maybe like when you start out, you think you have to be a certain way, you have to sit a certain way, or when you're doing a report, you have to have your hands a certain way, or you know, da, da, da. and it's like, just relax and be yourself. And even like voice wise as well, don't get too hung up on putting on a voice. It should be very similar to how you're speaking to me now. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so before we kind of let you go and get ready for tonight's awards, we saw that you were playing a charity golf tournament. Oh, so we just wanted to ask you a little bit about that. Great research. Any hole in ones yet? No hole in ones. I did hold a bunker shot though. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, that one wasn't on camera. It did happen. Oh, okay. But um, it was so much fun. And it, this was, so this was a challenge, learning to play golf from absolute scratch. So I never picked up a golf club. I mean, crazy golf doesn't really count, does it? And so I I was so far out of my comfort zone, I can't even tell you. I'm not really like that athletic. I used to play netball and I used to do quite a lot of swimming when I was younger, but like as I've gotten older, I just watch sport and present it. I don't actually play anything. It's more like low impact stuff, you know, like yoga mm -hmm. and a bit of light swimming here and there. <laughs> so I just thought, how am I going to cope with this? And initially I just thought, this is not for me. I'm not good at this. I'm never going to turn the corner. And then the more you practice, it starts clicking into place, don't get me wrong, I'm not still not like a semi-pro, but, um, you know, I can hit it off the tee pretty well, I can, Impressive. I'm, it's a step ahead of what I can, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still struggling off the tee, it's That's hard, the, it's it step, but when you get it, and if you've got a good coach, you just like, tiny little tweaks make such a difference, and, you know, putting as well, quite good at putting now, nice. not that great at chipping, or well, apart from that one, that I did, but that was a one-off. Um, but it was, yeah, it was it's really fun. It's crazy golf, you know, exactly. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to win the free pizza, because you can do that one oh, yeah. year, so I think I should probably try that, actually. But I think I'm a fair weather golfer, for sure. Yes. So I don't know about this this weather now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to do like some indoor golfing, I think. Driving range, isn't it? Driving range yeah. is, is actually quite relaxing because it's you can just unplug. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to, you know, not have my phone, unplug, get on with it. It's good.